Good evening, parents of Social Studies 8. I'm Mr. McGee, and I'm going to give you a tour of how to use Google Classroom to help support your youth. So they can do some work at home if they're sick or away for an extended period of time. All assignments for my class, except for four or five that revolve around software installed locally on our computers, or discussions based on videos that are not published to the internet, are done in class. To start, you need to sign in to Google Classroom. For whatever reason, there is a weird little glitch that I don't understand, but I'll show you how to deal with it. If you click up into the grid here, you will see that there is, of apps, there is no Google Classroom option. All right because not every Gmail account has Google Classroom attached but since our school pays for Google Classroom once we log in that is going to show up so we're going to click sign in now all students in Port Hardy Secondary School are given the same account it is their first name dot last name at sd85 dot email now, I have a uh, student account I use to demonstrate. So if I was a student, it would be kevin.mcgee at sd85.email. And then I'm going to click Next. And if you get this little pop-up, just dismiss it. Your password. Every student's password begins the same way. P H S S, so I'll show you here in capitals and then their student number, whatever that may be one, two, three, four, five, six. In my class, I tell students not to change it because then I can't help them log in if they have a problem. If for whatever reason they've changed it and they've forgotten, then a simple phone call to the office to speak to our office staff can have that password reset so that this can continue and they can get their work done. So I will log in. Hopefully I get my password right. I have a dozen different passwords I use. All right, so when you log in, you'll notice this is the glitch. It doesn't show us signed in and there still is no Google Classroom here. All you have to do is either is just click on Gmail. Just go to Gmail right there and now you'll see the school district icon shows up now it knows that we're signed in no thanks and if we go to apps we'll see classroom there so left click on that and it opens up the Google Classroom view for students your, your student may have more um, classes but here's my class social studies 8 spring 2024 we're going to left click on that. This brings us to the stream page where there's announcements and stuff. I don't use it, so there's no need to even look here. The next thing is classwork. This is what matters most to students. So we have a number of things on this page. The first one at the top is resources. This is where I post all the scanned chapters of the textbook that we use. I also have some maps to help uh, students understand, such as like Scandinavia, where the um, Vikings come from, we're studying the Vikings. So, and then the chapter scans, just like this. And I organized my work by week. We're at currently at week four when I filmed this. Um, I had a couple of parents ask for a video version of my guide I emailed out earlier in the year. Uh, so that's why I'm making this. And uh, so assignments that are in orange mean that they have been assigned, but the student has not done anything to them. The ones that are in gray mean that they have been opened and work has been done to them. So that'll give you a bit of an indication. <clears throat> the way to find out if you're youth has any work that needs to be done is to click on view your work and this will open all the assignments to date for your student 
and it will show you what they are what they have achieved on them now I realize that we are using the proficiency scale for our assignments all the chapter assignments are based on uh, it, they will be based on the proficiency scale I will just be making using my judgment as per the reporting order to give them a grade based on that given that this student has not done very well hasn't done any of the assignments that would probably be uh, insufficient evidence or approaching the numbers only just is only an indication that they completed it and how complete they did all students are expected to get extending on chapter assignments because I allow them to complete the assignment and submit it and if they don't get perfect on it they can resubmit it after making corrections so therefore if they may get all the corrections done they do everything I've asked that they would get an extending on those chapter assignments written assignments are a little bit different well we don't have very many we haven't done many of those and tests are again another way for me to tell how your youth is doing so let's say that you see your youth has not done chapter one assignment two how do they do it um, they can click on it right from here and click view details and it will open it up and here is the assignment right here left click on it it's going to open it up it's going to ask you to record your email click next and then here are all the questions um, all the chapter assignments follow the same thing some vocabulary that they have to identify and then some multiple choice questions on the next page as well if a student has so submitted work already so let's say we have a look at chapter one assignment one they only got four out of 19 it, they need to go back and make that correction so this the same process exists open it up click on it but it should tell us you've already responded you can view your score to see which one they got wrong and then oh look number four is wrong so they can edit their response and they can go and they can make that correction where do they find the work everything is in the textbook so under resources chapter one and then this is all done such that they can search through the document by hitting control F on the keyboard it opens up the find document option and they can look for keywords like architecture or Latin Roman legions they can copy it control C control V to paste it it's found it four times and whereabouts is it and it has found it there it has found it here it doesn't for whatever reason it did not find it there but there is the answer all vocabulary are in these yellow boxes but um, part of social studies is being able to locate correct information from incorrect information and that search feature is there to help them but not replace using their own methods and their own judgment so once they've done that then they can go down and submit it and it'll tell them and they can view their score again and they can see how they did and if they improved until they have handed, handed a perfect assignment the only assignments that I do not allow them to be uh, edited and resubmitted is tests but other than that this is all you really need to know about how to use uh, Google Classroom there is one thing I will mention and that is with uh, written assignments such as this one where it opens up and they would have to type in when they're done don't turn it in 
it makes life a lot easier down the road because if you just finish it and close it, I will be able to see it. I will be able to mark it. And if it needs to be corrected, your youth can go back in, open it up, and continue to do the work. If you click turn in, then it becomes a little bit of a problematic because if I turn it in and then I tell you uh, you need to make corrections, they're going to click on it and they're going to try to type and they can't. And it says request edit access, which is then going to send an email to me asking me to have access to it. The problem is is that I can't give them access to it um, because they have turned it in. They are the only ones that can remove it or unsubmit it. So if that happens, click on view instructions and unsubmit. Unsubmit to add or change attachments. Don't forget to resubmit. Don't worry about that. Just don't submit. And now they can go back in and make all the changes that they wish. Thanks for paying in and listening, and uh, hopefully this helps you out. Have a good evening.